Hello everybody, welcome to another Vintage Cube video. Interesting pack to start, we have both Deceiver Exarch and Zella's Conscript, so one possibility is to take the Conscripts and try and wheel Deceiver Exarch, and if that works, we're in a great spot. But if someone takes the Deceiver Exarch, then, then that looks kind of bad. Zella's Conscript is not that good just as a value 5 drop, it's playable in some decks, but not amazing. Stoneforge Mystic is first pickable, so is Library of Alexandria and Polluted Delta. I think I'm not going to take the Stoneforge first. This is the high upside pick, but I think Polluted Delta is the correct pick. Fetch lands are just broken, especially blue fetch lands. This is like a powerful combo, but we like there's a lot of powerful combos we can do, and Polluted Delta enabling all of them will be great. If we got past immediately, like, you know, Splinter Twin or Kiki Jiki, I would maybe regret it, but we do not. We get past... Hmm... A lot of lands, but not really the lands I was looking for to follow up Polluted Delta. Um, Daze is a pretty good card. Not one I typically like to second pick, but it is it is second pickable based on power level. We could take Into the Triome, which is a, a three-color land. Abzan is not really the color combination that I typically go for, though. Hmm... Couple burn spells. I don't think we want to take one of these Nia lands. I don't want to take Brain Freeze second. That's just that's way too early for this card. I do like Reanimator and Bone Charge is good in Reanimator, but it's a little bit narrow overall. I think we just take the Days. Yeah, we'll take the Days. Not a super exciting second pick though. Okay. Whoa. So there's Orcish Bowmasters. That's a really strong card. Also, Mystic Confluence. We could take Verdant Catacombs. We could take Sparse Headquarters. But I think I like taking the Bowmasters here. This card is very, very powerful. Yeah, let's take this. It just the thing that makes it so sweet is it, it wrecks creature decks. Like it's very good against noble hierarch, very good against green decks, red decks, white decks. And then the the ability punishes blue decks, so it's good against those as well. It's bad against like reanimator, but in pretty much every single other matchup, it's quite a strong card. Verdant Catacombs is nice, but I think this is actually a card that is worth taking even over a fetch land. But now we'll take another fetch land. Yeah, that's a great, a great pickup. Um, not much else that's a real consideration here. We'll take this. Okay, so we could just be like blue, black, mid range. We could be Esper. Here we see Murktide Regent versus Lingering Souls. I think those are the two main considerations. Sensei's Dividing Top also looks pretty good with the fetches, but not this early. Murktide Regent is fine, but I think I like taking the Lingering Souls here. Another possibility is we take Turnabout and try to like wheel Brain Freeze and go in that direction, but I don't want to be playing Storm unless Turnabout is wheeling. Yeah, let's take the Souls. It's not a flashy card, but I think it's a good one. We have a good mana base for it with like Esper Fetch Lands. Okay, ooh, Lurus is kind of interesting. It's very good with the Bowmasters. We could take Dark Depths. We could take Candelabra if we were in on the untapping stuff. We could take Infernal Grasp. I think I like taking Lurus, though. We don't need to play it. This is kind of a speculative pick, but high upside if we do get there. Uh, then we immediately see two good permanents that would break our Lurus restriction. So do we want to just abandon the Lurus or try to make that work? Yeah, I think we just abandon the Lurus, honestly, and take Liliana. Well, hmm. We'll take the Liliana. We might still play... Wait, actually, Liliana or Murderous... Maybe Murderous Rider is better. It's close. Liliana's great against small creatures, but we already have Bowmasters for that. This is good against Planeswalkers. Close pick. I think I like the... Uh, let's take the Liliana. It's close. Okay. Hmm. Alright, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to make Lurus work, unfortunately. Do we take Ophiomancer? It's not that good of a card. But black is pretty open. I don't want to take Noxious Gear Hulk. Yeah, I guess we take the Ophiomancer. And this is like, in like oh, okay, there's a Void Walker. That's really good. Also, Silent Clearing and Selfless Spirit. But yeah, let's take Void Walker. So I think we're like a black creature deck. There's Kite Self Rebooter, also Ephemerate, but 
We'll take the Freebooter. So we could still become a Luris deck. Those two are really good with Luris. Like, Ophiomancer's not that good. Honestly, Liliana isn't either. But we can only do Luris if we get, like, if it's really open. So we'll see. We do see Tenacious Underdog here, which is perfect. There's also Fairy Mastermind, though. Is that better than Tenacious Underdog? Hmm. Close pick. They're both pretty good. I think we actually take the underdog here, although it's very close. Okay, we'll take Jadar. So, a lot of two drops. That's good with Luris in theory. I think we do try to make this work. We might not end up playing blue. It depends on what we get. If we get, like, Time Walk, we'll play blue. Um, but blue doesn't look that open. We got a second pick days, and we've got no blue since then. We could end up just being black-white for sure. Pluto Delta would help us with black-white, probably. Okay, top or spectral procession? I think this is a little tough on the mana. We'll take top. No Graven Karens, which isn't bad. There's a world... Oh, we almost took this first time around, actually. So we could play that. And then Graven Karens, we could end up playing red. Who knows? <laughs> the old double Mox pack. All right, we cannot complain. Mox Jet is excellent. Black Lotus would be much better, but this is maybe the second best card we could get. Um, especially with this curve. Yeah, not much consideration for anything else. Gta would be nice on the wheel. Maybe Tithe Taker. But yeah, we'll take the mocks for sure. And now we could play um, Urza Saga, which would be a good pickup. This deck is looking pretty sweet. All right, great pick here. We'll take the Thoughts, or great pack. Thoughtsies is perfect. Misery's Shadow is a card we would maybe play. Spell Pierce as well. Maybe Lion Sash. I, I guess I kind of wish we took the Stone Forge Mystic if we get the Lion Sash. But yeah, let's just take the Thoughtseize. Really good card. There's the Kiki Jiki and the High Tide. Could have gone in one of those directions, but that's not what we're doing here. Pretty easy Godless Shrine. That's a great pickup. We don't have white cards yet, really, but I think we're very likely to be playing some white. And now we have very good mana for uh, for these colors. Ooh, okay, Scrubland or Mox Diamond. We would actually play Yogmoth too if we weren't a Luris deck, but I think Luris is good enough to go for. Honestly, Mox Diamond looks pretty good here with our curve. But Scrubland gives us very good mana. We might not even be playing white though. Yeah, I don't love Mox Diamond in general, but I think in this deck, Mox Diamond looks pretty good. Lots of two drops plus a mana sink later. Okay, March of Otherworldly Light, Student of Warfare. I don't think we're a shallow grave deck. We'll take the March. That's a solid pickup. We need removal. We actually have no removal right now, and that's a huge problem. Decks like this need access to good removal because our creatures are all small. They get outclassed pretty quickly, so we need to be able to kill their creatures. All right, there's Phantasmal Image, which is good if we're playing blue. Very good with, like, Voidwalker, Bowmasters... Could be good with their stuff as well. There's also Weathered Wayfinder. Weathered Wayfarer, rather. I think I like taking Phantasm Image, though. This is a really good card in this deck, if we can get there on the mana. Oh, Inquisition and Duress. All right, we'll take the Inquisition. Both good. So we'll see. We might end up just cutting blue and going straight uh, black-white, in which case I'll be sad we didn't get the Scrubland. Or, I mean, no, what do we pass for that? It just happened. We took Phantasmal Image over... I forget, honestly. That's kind of embarrassing, but it was uh, not that good of a card. But we'll see. It'd be nice to play these, but we're not going to do it. We're not going to splash just for these two. We need to pick up, like, Snapcaster Mage, Ancestral, Time Walk, things like that, or just really good fixing. We're looking solid on playables, though. You play this, maybe, and... I mean, yeah, that gives us a decent number of good spells already. Okay, Savine's Reclamation is actually pretty nice here. It returns Luris and also all of our threats, but we, we probably need to take the Soul Transfer, unfortunately. As, as sweet as it would be to be a good Savine's Reclamation deck, we really need good removal. Yeah, I'll take this card. 
Okay, Tithe Taker and Putrid Imp. Putrid Imp is just weak. Let's take in this deck. Let's take Tithe Taker. Which is also kind of weak, but it's a solid curve filler. Okay, Dam and Lion Sash are both very good options here. I think we take the Dam, though. Once again, we just really need good removal in this deck. And it's looking more and more like we're just going to be black-white. So I think we're cutting these two. And nice. I, and I was literally about to say, and, and hoping the scrub line comes around, and it does. All right, now our mana is great. Um, we're never playing Bizarre. Guess we'll take Gideon. We could sideboard into a bigger deck in some matchups. Maybe. Unlikely, but possible. All right, so at the end of two packs, we have two Moxen. We have Thoughtseize Inquisition. Lots of good threats. We have okay removal, but we do want more removal. And in terms of playables... We have 16, Robber of the Rich. Man, I wish we could play that card. So we need, this is probably going to be, a sev like, with Mox Diamond and Mox Jet and 17 lands. Like, Mox Diamond, you can't really count as land. So, yeah, we still need a reasonable number of playables. If we were to add 12 basics, that puts us at 33. So we need 7 spells in pack 3. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, Vampiric Tutor doesn't look amazing here, it's fine. Um, I think Bobble is actually kind of a slam dunk here. It's very good with Luris specifically. It means Luris like immediately when it comes into play draws you a card and at a minimum can draw you a card for zero mana every turn he's in play. And also we just like have tons of artifacts now, so Urza Saga is like a phenomenal card here. Urza Saga is like on the same tier as like... Almost, almost as good as like Ancestral Recall for this deck at this point. We could win games just by playing Urza Saga. We'll take this. Okay, Reanimate. That looks great. Vindicate and Retrofitter Foundry are also pretty good, as is Fire Covenant and Mutt, honestly. But I think we take the Reanimate. It's very good with Luris. If they kill it, we can bring it back. And L Vindicate should come around. I think that's the right play. Yeah. It also, we can just, like, thought seize our opponent and then vindicate, uh, and then uh, reanimate their thing. Okay, are we a Dark Ritual deck? Probably not. Could take Oust, could take... Yeah, we're not Imperial Sealing. Intrepid Adversary would be fine, but not super exciting. I think we just take the removal spell. It's kind of close. But yeah, let's take the Oust. I guess we do want a few more creatures, and we don't really want to be playing this Talisman. Oh, I would love to play Minskin Boo, also Teferi. But I think at this point we take the Evolved Sleeper. Winds of Abandon is an option too, but we just we got some we have decent removal now, and I do want some more good threats. This is a good threat that scales well in the late game. So playing some black white Luris. There's Rafine's Tower for the blue splash. But at this point we're pretty solidly not playing blue. Let's just take Thalia. Which might not make the cut. It depends on how many creatures we end up with. But at the very least, it's a great sideboard card. And it might be a good main deck card as well. Okay. Uh, I would love to play Ledger Shredder in this deck, but that breaks our restriction, so we'll take Concealing Curtains, which is not super exciting, but it's not bad. This is a relatively good deck for it. Okay, a lot of stuff here we would like to play. This is also weirdly a, a decent balance deck. It's good with all our cheap artifacts. But I think we just take the Blood Chief's Thirst. Yeah, let's take this. And Fatal Push. Okay, our removal is officially good now, which is really nice. I think now we're cutting Thalia. We're kind of light on creatures for it being a Thalia deck. I also don't actually think we want to play Mox Diamond anymore, weirdly. We ended up, like, at that point, we had tons of twos, but now we have a much lower curve. Okay, Una's Prowler, I think we can just play as a creature. A 3-1 Flyer for two is no joke, and, you know, they can shrink it, but it's fine. 
Nice, Vindicate Wield. We were assuming it would. I would honestly be very surprised if it didn't, but still good to see. Okay, we're not splashing red, so let's take Dark Ritual. We can bring that in in matchups where we need to be really fast. So we could just play this with 17 lands, with 12 basics, which looks pretty good. Wow, Teferi going super late. But we'll take Winds of Abandon, which is a card we can probably play here. Now we have, like, maybe even too much removal. What do we take over... We took Soul Transfer over a card that was pretty good. I forget what it was. But I'm regretting that now. At the time, we really needed removal, but now we ended up with a ton. So for removal, we have March, Soul Transfer, Vindicate, Winds of Abandon, Dam, Oust, Fatal Push... Blood Chief's Thirst, yeah, eight removal spells, that's a ton. I mean, that's not a bad place to be. I think with that with that much removal, we'll be good against creature decks, and Luris decks have a kind of structural advantage against control decks, where you just have a low curve and an extra threat, and it can just be hard for the decks like that to stabilize against Luris. Um, but we probably do want to cut one of our removal spells here. All right, we'll take the card that's in our colors. So is our worst removal spell Oust or Winds of Aban Abandon? Bowmark Courier is not good enough, unfortunately. If we had a red fetchable land, maybe, but we don't. So we're th uh, maybe we just play the Thalia, even though it's not the best in this deck. Something like this. Oh, wait, no, we want another cut, so we, we can just do this. Yeah, this seems solid. So let's sort by color. Solidly heavier on the black. We have good fixing. So we did this. That's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 black. We don't need 15. Four, uh, we don't even need 14. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 white. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 black. Yeah, that seems good. Um... Yeah, I think we'd run it like this. Lots of removal, two discard spells, a Mox Jet. Um, maybe we are supposed to play Mox Diamond over one of these lands. You know what? Let's play the Mox Diamond over Nurturing Pea Land. Or is it over a Swamp? No, over a Plains, I think. Yeah, we'll try this. Mox Diamond will be bad some games, but I think it's worth it to try. It is card disadvantage, but we don't need to be getting up to like... Like, Mox Diamond is not good if you're trying to get up to like 5 or 6 mana, but we're not really. We can top out at 3. So just going like turn 1, double 1 drop, turn 2, bring back Luris, turn 3, play Luris is like pretty good. Yeah, we'll try it like this. This deck looks sweet. Black, white, Luris. See you in round one. All right, here we are for round one. Unfortunately, we are on the draw, but we have a good hand. We'll keep. Mix of lands and spells, a couple of removal spells, a threat. Definitely a good, nice one here. Uh, do we want to lead on Sensei's Dividing Top? That means we don't have double black for playing both of these next turn. That's probably not that relevant, though. And I like saving the... Um, the fetch land so we can shuffle if we have some bad cards we don't want with the top. Hopefully this is a creature we can kill. Bummer. Okay, we don't have a threat to play next this turn, so... Well... No, let's take our draw set. There's a lot of two drops we could draw that we would want to cast, including that. Like, it's kind of weak. Just like, you know. I guess, I mean, three power for a two drop. We don't have particular synergies with it, but it does let us get on the board, hopefully start attacking. And it's nice if they have a planeswalker or something like that to attack. All right, so they have all five colors. One angle of attack we don't have is any Wastelander uh, strip mine stuff.
Omnath. Oracle will die. Interesting. So, hopefully we can find a land for Dam, which we can just cast. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll this is okay. We're going to take our draw step and then spin the top. Hopefully finding a black source. Nice. Um, okay. Yeah, let's just draw this. Play land. Damn. Oh! Whoa, man, that was a bad misclick. I meant to, of course, kill the Oracle of Moldiah. Oh, that sucks. Sorry about that. That's going to cost us pretty badly. We can still take this thing out with Blood Chief's Thirst if we want to, but that's not a very good exchange for us. They're just going to go over the top of what we're doing now. And we're going to draw a top. We can play and kick Blood Chief's Thirst on the Oracle if we care about that. Oh, man, yeah, that's a tough misclick. Killing this Oracle would have been so nice. So they play their showdown of the Scalds. Fourth Aer Lingus is a good one to know about. Yeah, this and they have Field of the Dead. We're close to being able to go to game two in this. I think it should be an okay matchup. But, yeah, it's pretty much over here. If we'd killed the Oracle, we would still be behind, but it would be not over. Okay, so I think we want to get some flyers in the board to... Have a chance against the fourth Aer Lingus. So let's do this. Hit for three. Pass. Natural order on top? Jeez. So they can make six two twos. Yeah, we can we can go to game three. There's no, we're not going to beat fourth Aerolingus here. Okay, so or game two rather. I don't think we want Thalia. Winds of Abandon is a possibility, although I don't love putting lands into play against the Field of the Dead deck. So I think we just run it back. On the play, actually, let's cut the Mox Diamond for a land and then run it back. On the draw, we'll bring that back in. All right, on the play, no misclicks this game. Okay, I think we can keep this. Not super exciting, but keep in mind we have Lurus, so we have more mana than or more uh, more action than it seems. And I like having Inquisition on the play that can, like, potentially strand them with an awkward hand. All right, Inquisition of Kozlek, what you got? Um, hmm. I think we take the tracker here and try and win before they get up to like tons of mana for fourth Aer Lingus. Fourth Aer Lingus is a stronger card. If they get more mana, but at three mana, we would definitely, like, fourth Aer Lingus, it kind of helps us. Like, I think we actually play the Monarch game better than they do. So we don't really mind that being something that's in play. We're a deck with, like, lots of cheap creatures and lingering souls and stuff like that. Okay, they don't strip mine us, no surprise there. We draw Tenacious Underdog, not a bad draw, but we're going to still lead on the Jadar. They both hit for three, but Jadar puts multiple bodies under the board, and we also might want to end up blitzing Tenacious Underdog down the road. Voidwalker, great draw.
So solid aggressive draw here. We're going to be swinging for three on turn three, six on turn four, or even potentially um, nine on turn four if we want to blitz the tenacious underdog. They don't crack their fetch land. Interesting. There's the strip mine. And then fourth air lingus like actively helps us a lot here if they play that. I think. Looks like they are going for it. Unless they drew another card. I and mean, we're just fine with both players passing the monarchy back and forth if we're... Yeah, I think that's okay for us. But I'm going to have Excavator. Not too good against the Voidwalker, but it does just uh, block our creatures kind of well. So... I think we blitz the Tenacious Underdog. We could also bring back Luris or establish the Unus Prowler, or like just play out our hand. Maybe we're supposed to not blitz and just play this, but it does seem like hitting for six is pretty relevant here against the Voidwalker, especially. Um, and they aren't that close to playing Omnath because the Strip Mine doesn't work. Let's let this draw a card. Bobble. Really greedy to play multiple colorless lands in your Omnath deck. They are one land away from playing Elder Gargaroth, though. We have a few ways to kill it, but we don't have a way yet. Oh, they don't even have red-white mana, so they can't play 4th Air Lingus. Yeah, we know three of the four cards, and they can't cast any of them. They concede. Seems a little preemptive, but they were pretty far away from... Do I mean, yeah, like, maybe they could just Elder Garger off us, and we have a hard time against that. But, okay, we'll take it. Do we want to bring in Winds of Abandon now that we've seen more of their deck? It's pretty good against Gargaroth. It's bad against Field of the Dead, but they do have a lot of threats that we need to deal with. But we do have a lot of removal. Um, let's do the Mox Diamond Exchange we mentioned. I don't care about my life total too much. I'm not going to bring in the Peatland. I don't think Thali is good still. I don't think we want Dark Ritual. I, I think Mox Diamond is better than Dark Ritual here. Do we want Winds of Abandon? The, giving them a land really does hurt in this matchup. And so for good answers to um, Elder Gargaroth, Vindicate and Dam and Oust are fine. Blood Chief's Thirst and March can do it, but they're a little slower, but I think that's honestly fine. We can also Thought Seize it. It's a 5-drop. We'll, uh, we'll stay relatively proactive here. So far, we have not used Luris. This isn't really the type of matchup where you want Luris, though. We want Luris against, um, like, more controlling decks rather than mid-range. Alright, great hand. I think we're going to be interacting on turn one pretty much no matter what, instead of playing Evolved Sleeper. Like, if they play a Mana Dork, we'll kill the Dork. If they pl don't play anything, we'll Thought Seize over playing the Sleeper. Elvis Reclaimer. I don't think we care about that, really. I think I would still rather Thought Seize. They can get their Strip Mine, Strip Mine us on turn three if they want to, but that doesn't seem that bad for us. Oh, Wheel of Fortune, huh. All right, we'll take the wheel. That's a way they can recoup from this card advantage. I guess we could have uh, taken it with a free boot or two, but I don't really want to let them get their thing back. They place Savannah and pass. We draw another land. That's good. Um, I think I will... Blood Chief's Thirst this, make them decide what land they want to get now, and then we can de uh, develop the Sleeper. And if they're, like, if we're ahead on board and they're strip mining, that's not necessarily bad for us. And especially in their, like, yeah, their deck is much more man-hungry than ours. I think strip mine, like, we are a little light on lands. A, they don't know that, and B... In their deck that's playing all these colors and Field of the Dead and whatnot, 
against the deck that they know tops out with a curve of two. Feels like Strip Mine's a little greedy. It's probably better from their information set to get just a Triome. But we'll see what they choose to do. They do go for the Strip Mine, fair enough. There's the foothills. They did draw a three drop. That's bad. If it's ramming up excavator, they might be setting up for a strip mine, looping strip mine starting next turn. But we have dam this uh, this turn, so that won't work. And they're deciding what are their lands to get. All right, they do have all of their colors, or we think that's all their colors. Tireless tracker go. All right, not scary at all. Let's just kill that now. I think. Yeah, let's kill that. Well, we have double black. There's an argument to playing Voidwalker instead. I think this is fine. Alright, nice. So... I think it's better to play Voidwalker and level this up than to do anything else. We're paying a lot of life here, uh, but that is not particularly relevant in this matchup. All right, five power on board. We can kill them pretty quickly. We can kite self freebooter them next turn. There is a land, so they're getting close to playing Titania. Vindicate. That's such a good top deck. Wow. Okay, so let's just swing for five. And then Vindicate. Probably the blue source. We can't take them off of green, which is the number one thing I would like to take them off of. So would you rather take them off of... Double red slash double white, or single blue, and I think the answer is single blue. They did immediately top deck another blue source, but that's fine. They can't play Titania. Yeah, getting strip mine it, it was a, a huge blunder for them. Maybe it was okay to, given their information set at the time, but it, it, at this point it looks like that is going to be better for us. Oracle of Moldiah, no land off the top. Ah, they do hit the land off the top. That's bad. They hit two lands off the top. All right. Well, we need to win with unblockable creatures now. So let's play the Mox. Swing with the team. We'll see if they choose to block the Sleeper. They do. Okay, so let's make it a 3-3. Three, three. And then we'll play Lingering Souls. Then they can play Titania. And put a bunch of 5-3s into play, but we have Trump Blockers for those. So they have one unknown. Okay, they're at five, so they're dead to our Voidwalker plus Spirit token now. Okay. Right, these, this doesn't have reach, and it doesn't make creatures with reach. Yeah, so it misplayed there. It could have had one more turn to untap, but I think we were going to win that game either way. Feels good to win that. I, like That seems like that would be one of our worst matchups, to be honest. They have lots of creatures that just go over the top of what we're doing. But we're able to, and, and like we, so does Mono Green, but against Mono Green, we can kill all their Mana Dorks and get them that way. But against them, they're like using Sakura Tribe Elder and stuff to put lands into play, which we can't interact with. But we get there. Want to know? See you in round two. All right. 0 for 2 on the die rolls, which is not ideal, but that's okay. We can overcome. We're on the draw with, ooh, 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 ooh. So... Close hand. The only reason that this is close is because we have Lurus. And I think Lurus is potentially enough to make us do it. Like, we have Mana Sinks. Yeah, I think I will keep it. We can, like, Thought Seize them and then reanimate something if they're playing big creatures of their own. It's also, like, functional at the very least. I mean, if we have no play on turn two, that would be bad. But we get three looks by turn two. Oh, so sad to start getting that message. Okay, another 
Elvish Reclaimer deck. All right. Zura and Orb. They're going deep. So, yeah, this is basically the same matchup we just played. That sucks. I would much prefer to get to try something else, but it's okay. Concealing Curtains. Bobble. It's, like, very hard to say if we want to do it in the upkeep or not. It also almost definitely doesn't matter. This is better against discard. Oh, drawing Mox Simon when you're on a mulligan is not great. Doing it in their upkeep is better against draw sevens, and it's better against um, thought sees. It's worse against like orcish bowmaster. Oh, well, that's too bad. Yeah, that's actually quite annoying. Blood chief's thirst. No blood chief's thirst, but I do think we actually want to fatal push this elvish reclaimer here, because otherwise they can sack lands and then just return the lands. They can still do that with Horizon Canopy, but that puts them down mana. And then the follow-up question is, do we want to reanimate their Reclaimer? I don't think so. I think we can get something better. So let's just go land and pass. And then next turn we can either flip our Concealing Curtains or play Lingering Souls, but probably we want to flip the Curtains. Okay, they do go for this line. That's a good card. That is something we do want to reanimate if possible. There's a Vindicate. Okay, let's go for that. Yeah, we'll Vindicate their thing, and then next turn we can steal it. We're letting them keep the Ren and Six, which isn't ideal, but I think it's worth it to get their Huntmaster and try to, like, just build up a board presence. So the choice for next turn is whether we want to... Oh man, do they have another... Okay, Ramanap. That does... Okay, that's not too bad for us. Would we rather play Souls or flip this guy? I think flip this. They have no cards though. Yeah, I guess we, let's add to the board. Let's add to the board. So we could also um, return Lurus potentially. I think we want to try to take this Ren and Six down. But then again, Souls is not that good against Ren and Six. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to grab Lurus here. Oh, it's so close. You know what? No, Lurus is good, but we I think we want to add to the board right now and just try to... Try to kill them before that. Like, I think they will probably win the long game even if, even if we have Lurus. Lurus Bubble is good, but we just have so much other stuff to be doing with our mana right now. It would be great if they couldn't, if they don't play a spell and we get to flip Hunt Master. And then on our turn, we can flip it back. Okay, Strip Mine. Really don't care about that here. Yeah, this seems like a great position. I don't think they should have even strip mined us, honestly. Kill this and this. Yeah, let's oust this. And they concede, okay. So, playing against the same deck again, strip mine, land stuff. Um, not what I want, but here's where we are. Yeah, Sundering Titan would be good against them, but. Not going to be too easy to play that one. I, I think we just do basically, we no, do no sideboard again. On the draw, so that we'll keep the Mox Diamond. Yeah. Okay. Definitely a playable hand. If they have turn two, like, their, their best draws will wreck us. If they have, like, turn one, land, Mox Diamond, Ren and Six, and then start strip mining us immediately, we'll lose. Okay, that's definitely better than playing Concealing Curtains. Huh. All good cards here, unfortunately. Um, I think we take the Pyromancer. Recruiter is slow. 
And Brahmin app we have Dam for. Although maybe we just want to try to overload Dam this game. In which case it's better to take the Ramen app. Yeah, let's take the Ramen app actually. Just the most powerful card. It is a bummer that they have nothing for us to kite sail for rebooter. They can just jam turn two. Oh no, they don't have double red for Pyromancer, but they can play Recruiter and find something. That seems fine. What do they get? Presumably the three cards they have in their hand are some of their main targets. Okay, that's fine. Um, Alright, we'll drop the curtains. Play tapped land and pass. I'm not going to use dam here on the, uh, on the land of our elves. They just do land go? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll block. And I think we just grab Lurus now. That's a terrible draw. Here comes Huntmaster. And now, Orcus Bowmaster, good draw. So, I think we just want to sweep the board. If we hadn't drawn the Bowmasters, I'd be a little bit worried about the Pyromancer getting a lot of value. But in this situation, I feel like we can just, uh, just overload and then the Bowmaster can take care of Pyromancer very effectively. It's like, good against the tokens, good against the end of the battlefield effect, just like, very good all around. All right, a talisman that's not red. That's good for us. Let's go. Do we want to go Lurus into Concealing Curtains? Or do we want to hold up Bowmaster? I guess we'll get the Lurus value. We don't even know if they're going to be able to play their Season Pyromancer. They're ready. <laughs> That's just not a good card. <laughs> it's okay in some very specific decks, but it's not good here. Thought he's great draw. Let's play that. Let's take Mizium Mortars. And then Kaisa Freebooter the Ephemerate. Okay, so we're good against land decks, I guess. Hopefully we get to play something else in the finals. Uh, see you there. All right, we are once again on the draw. The die rolls have not been going our way this league, but the games have, and so hopefully we can continue that streak. All right, this hand's a keep. We don't have white mana, but we do have a mox. We can just play turn one Prowler, which is kind of bad if they're playing Reanimator. It could help them. Oh, they have their own Prowler. That's funny. Um... Okay, I don't think we want to play our Prowler here. I mean, we could. But I like playing Concealing Curtains on turn one because it lets us potentially thought seize them on turn two. So we'll see. We could just die here. I mean, maybe they'll just put a track into play on turn two and... That's what happens when you get, like, on the draw against Mox and a fast combo is kind of, kind of tough. And I don't think that means that our deck is bad. That's just tough for anyone. Liliana of the Veil. Okay. Take this, and then they would presumably make a sacrifice our Concealing Curtains. Yep. All right, not a bad draw. Actually, actively a good draw. We are going to march the mock sapphire. It's 
setting them back on mana, and then play Una's Prowler. And pass. And we're threatening to kill their Lily on the next turn. If they plus, we'll, we can just discard the Nurturing Peatland. Alistair on there, Una's Prowler isn't amazing, but... Like, the battle of the Una's Prowlers is kind of funny. Like, I mean, they can make our Prowler not kill their Lily on if they want to. Plus, we'll pitch the Peatland. If we really liked our hand, we could also spin the top, or like, tap the top to draw a card, but that seems fine. They just discard land, good. Yeah, in these low resource games, these sorts of lands are bad. This is not a good attack, I think. Yeah, I feel like they want to defend their Liliana and then make a sacrifice or Unish Prowler, but we'll take it. Good draw. Let's attack a Lily. Oh, do they have Orcish Bowmasters? That would be terrible. If they could use a kill spell on the Unish Prowler, that's totally fine. I wish we had a Bowmasters of our own here. Okay. Sure. So now they're going to discard something to protect their guy. Mana Crypt, okay. Now what do we want to do? We could go for the high upside play of... Let's just let them have their Unish Prowler, actually. Yeah, let's just grab Luris and pass. Okay, I think we're going to discard Alst here. I mean, I guess this Unus Prowler is becoming somewhat of a threat, but I think we still discard the Alst. Okay. Draw land. That's a good draw. Okay, let's send our Prowler at their Lily. I think we're fine trading Prowlers here. We win this long game. Now, do we want to Vindicate Liliana or play Luris into Concealing Curtains? I think I like Vindicating Liliana because this takes them off of... Um, like, now they don't have a discard outlet, so they're not really close to doing anything now. They can't reanimate. We have Luris, which will win the long game. This is, like, a perfect example of where Luris is good. Like, we just, both players traded on resources, and this is the last thing standing. So, these are not that good, but that's fine. We can take, um... Yeah, we'll take these. We'll go... This. 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 Untap, draw, play land, and then we'll play this into Concealing Curtains. Just a nice little two for one here. And then we can decide if we want it if we want to shuffle away the Jadar or not. It's an okay draw. If we could shuffle like if we had shuffles for every turn, I would shuffle it away. But if we only have one shuffle, I kinda think we wanna get all the action that we can. So let's transform this. Take a look at their hand. Okay. I'm a little bit apprehensive about playing the Unish Prowler here. Since it gives them a discard outlet. We'll see what they have in their hand. If they have, like, Grizzlebrand attracts in their hand, we're not going to play Unus Prowler. If they just have, like, awkward... Okay, yeah, we'll play Unus Prowler now. We'll take Exhum. I think that's worth playing. They get to draw whatever their other card is. And then, yeah, let's, let's get our, our value then. They're not that close to reanimating anything. We shuffle away the land that we don't want. Hit for six. And then they're almost dead next turn. I 
And we get to look at four new cards on our next turn with the top. They hit the green source, they can play Utopia Sprawl, that's fine. If we can find Tenacious Underdog, then we can force them to discard their last card. I wonder if they Vampiric Tutor for the forest or for their other card. Palantir? That is so bad here. For them, like it just does nothing. I have no idea what they played Vampiric Tutor for. Basic Forest and Palantir both seem so weak. Alright, no, you can't draw a card. We take six, that's fine. Okay, let's spin the top. Okay. Um, so close to lethal. We can, like, almost get snazzy with, like, bowmasters, kill our own bowmasters, do something, but that doesn't actually help us. Do we want to play the Jadar? Sure. And now the Palantir will kill them in their in their end step. Should be a kind of rough matchup though if they have. It depends on how you know, on reanimating they are. If they're playing like a mono black control deck, where like Luris will just win like it did here. But if they're playing um, like a more all in reanimator deck, we have two discard spells and then a few answers. This is definitely a matchup for Winds of Abandon. So let's draw. Bowmaster. And then we're going to let them draw a card for the win. Okay. So, we take down... Maybe Soltai Reanimator? A little unclear on exactly their colors. We'll bring in the Winds of Abandon. What do we not want? Well, also do we want Thalia? On the plate, Thalia looks pretty good. Maybe on the draw we don't need it. In terms of our removal, we want the removal that is that lines up well. March hits their mocks. We want the exile-based removal. I think dam is good too. Just like things that hit their big creatures efficiently are nice. Fatal push could be a cut. It's good against Una's Prowler. And they are playing green, which could mean it's good against other stuff they have too. I definitely want to play reanimate so we can take their things. Yeah, I think I'll cut the push for the Winds of Abandon here. And we'll run it back. Hoping for turn one, Swamp, Thoughtseize, Mox, Jet, Reanimate on their Grave Titan. Okay, it's not that, but it's definitely keep. Doubt the Voidwalker is... I mean, it's good against their deck in theory. In practice, it's going to get killed a lot, I think. But if they don't have an efficient way to deal with this, then we'll be in a great spot. We're going to lead on curtains here because that lets us um, that lets us play Voidwalker and have it not die to the Liliana. All right, they do keep seven. We will keep as well. All right, good start. They'll probably name black here. Green, really? Okay. Ceiling curtains go. If they have like turn two grist here, it's not going to be great for us. Suspicious stowaway, that's not bad for us. We're definitely going to get Voidwalker into play immediately. Kitesail Freebooter is good as well, but I think Voidwalker is both more pressure, and also next turn we can flip the Concealing Curtains and Thought Seize them. And if they discard a Fatty here, of course, we also that's also great. Voidwalker is pretty nice in this matchup. Graveyard Hate that also can sometimes just cheat something huge into play. They just discard a Swamp, though. Um, okay, let's... 
do this. Yeah, I think this is just the play. I don't love that their Seafaring Werewolf was flipped, but yeah, so we can just cast Heighten of Industry here. That seems like that's got to be worth it. I mean, they do have Entomb Recurring Nightmare, so maybe we don't actually want to do this? Huh. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, Entomb plus, plus Recurring Nightmare is just a huge problem for us next turn, and we can't kill their Seafaring Werewolf. Unfortunately, Titan of Industry can't do what we would want it to do. One option is to take their Recurring Nightmare, cast it. Wait, what does this thing do? It returns... Return to its owner's hand, so that would not be good for us. Huh. I guess we just don't cast anything, <laughs> weirdly. They concede! Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Okay, I mean, we'll take it. Quick League. This deck was great. I mean, yeah, Orzhov Luris. Um, we just cruised, pretty much. I mean, we played against a tough matchup twice, but we were able to go 3-1 and one against it. We went 0-3 on die rolls, but still 6-1 and one in games. Um, the deck... The thing that made this deck good was not really Luris. Luris won us one game, totally, but the thing that made it good was the removal. Just having lots of cheap interaction, Thoughtseize, Inquisition, Concealing Curtains, and then like seven or eight removal spells. So we could play creatures that aren't that powerful on their own. Like, Jadar is not a broken card, but if you back it up with tons of removal spells, hitting for three every turn is pretty good. Same for a lot of these cards, like Concealing Curtains, like, you know, Orcus Bowmasters is a really good card, but... There was none, no card here was just like totally broken. It was just cheap interaction, low curve, pretty quick clock, and then punishing the opponents for stumbling a little bit. Um, I guess Vindicate was a bit of a standout. Like being able to kill a land was huge at one point. Um, whenever we drew Mox Jet, of course, that helped. And then one game was just absolutely the Luris show. That game, I think it was game one in match three. Yeah, game one in the finals where they had Liliana going and we just like put Luris into our hand, then play Luris, get two things back from the graveyard, just totally took over. Um, it did help that we didn't play against that many broken draws from the opponent. Um, like, we never played against turn two, Exhume, against Reanimator. We never played against, like, Ren and Six plus Fetch Land really quickly. So I do think that that helped us. A big part of Vintage Cube is winning the matchup lottery and having your opponents not just Black Lotus you or whatever. Uh, but yeah, really fun league. I love playing a good Luris deck when... Uh, when it comes together, and come together it did. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.